Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanted to cover a tool that I found to be immensely helpful in my PhD, a tool that has allowed me to stay on top of my experiments, organize them, schedule them, and put them on a calendar so that I know when I'm gonna do them. It's probably been one of the most helpful tools that I've used in my PhD. And this tool is called Benchling. Benchling is an electronic lab book that is available on the cloud, meaning you can access it anywhere, anytime, even in the convenience of your own home. So in this video, I want to cover a couple things. First of all, I want to talk about why I decided to move over to an electronic lab book. And then I want to talk about why I chose Benchling. For the third part of this video, I'm going to do a very basic walkthrough of Benchling, how to use it, how to set it up, so that if it's something that you're interested in, you can also go ahead and get started after watching this video. All right, so first of all, why did I move over to an electronic lab book? Well, it actually started during COVID. One of the issues I was having, obviously, was that the lab was shut down, so I wasn't going to lab, and I was planning out a lot of experiments, doing some calculations, like setting up my treatments in uh, my cell media treatments, calculating the correct doses and, and concentrations to use. And I had this spread out across a bunch of documents and I wanted to put, put it together in a more organized way. So then I started looking for resources that were available to do that, things that were more specific for scientific research. Now there were a number of options. For example, you can use OneNote, you can use Notion, Evernote. There's a lot of different there's a lot of different electronic books, but I wanted something that was more specific that could be used as a lab book. And I think one of the biggest or most uh, one of the biggest requirements for that is to have something that cannot be overridden. So if you make some kind of change, the original content of the note is also preserved. That's probably one of the most essential things that you require in a lab book. So then I started looking for electronic lab books specifically, and I tried a few, but the one that really caught my eye was Benchling. And there's a number of reasons why, which I'll get into in the third part of this video. But long story short, it just has a number of really cool features. The main ones that stick out to me is that it has a calendar view so that you can set up your experiments with the dates that you plan to do them, and then you can pull it up in a calendar view, which makes it really easy to visually track and organize your experiments. Some other main features that I really enjoy are that you can implement a very organized structure for your projects. You can also collaborate. I think that's actually a really big one. So for example, I have a lot of undergrads that I work with and they also have their own Benchling accounts. And if I want to assign an experiment to an undergrad or I want to note down that the undergrad that I'm working with ran a certain part of the experiment, I can simply tag them in my lab note. This makes it a lot easier to keep track of who is doing a certain experiment and how those tasks are being carried out. There are also other features in Benchling. For example, there is a toolbox that you can use to identify sequences for CRISPR-Cas9 knockout. So like I said, there's a library of features on Benchling which make it really useful as an electronic lab book. And together, all these features made me feel like that it was something that was easy to use and also superior to something like OneNote for the purpose of lab documentation. So with that in mind, let's go over to the computer and I'll do a quick walkthrough of how to use Benchling and how to set up projects and experiments in Benchling. All right, so we're here on the main Benchling, on the Benchling homepage, you can easily sign up using your using a Google account. All right, so it's pretty basic. Just put in your name, username, and a password. We're going to go ahead and verify this. All right, we are now in. So I'm going to go ahead and select the academic option, build out my profile. Let's just do bioengineering next. So my lab's already in here. I'm gonna let's see. The one thing I don't really like in here is that the search feature is a little broken. It's not ideal. Uh, I can go ahead and make this request to join my lab group. And this way, when I, you can do a couple things. For example, you can view other lab members' calendars or planned experiments. It really depends on what privileges they've given you. But this would make it easy, for example, as a lab manager to see what experiments are going on in the lab. And I think that's sort of the idea here, but it's not something you have to do, but I guess it is a nifty feature if that is something that is of interest. All right, now you're gonna see two options here. 
this doesn't really matter because both options will be available to you when you actually use Benchling. So let's forget this for now and we'll just go over Benchling as a whole and we'll come back to setting up projects and experiments. You'll notice five tabs here. The first is the home tab, which has a couple things here. Uh, when you first join, you can join an organization, you can take a tour, set up recovery, email address, you can explore the molecular biology and notebook sections, but it's also here that you can access the calendar. If you hover your cursor onto this icon and click it, this will pop out this calendar. And this is where you can see the experiments that you have planned for the month or the two weeks or the day. If you go to this folder, this is where you'll see all your projects. The search icon will let you search through all of your entries. Create is where you can go and set a new project. Um, you can you can use templates, which I'll get into a little bit later. But for now, let's start with a blank entry. All right, so let's call this sample experiment one. You'll notice that it populates the date automatically. This is always based off the day. The first day in here will always be based off the current date. And that's something to keep in mind if you've set up a template with multiple dates. For example, if you have a 10 day long experiment, it will set that first day to the day that you make this. So just be careful of that if you're starting, if you're putting in the entry a day or two late, you're going to have to make sure that you set the uh, correct date when you, when you first open up the experiment. And you can do that from here. So if I do create a new entry from template, you'll see the option to set an initial day, and then you can go ahead and set this to the correct date. You can also select the folder that it's gonna be in, and then choose a template, and then finally you would put the name of the experiment right here. All right, now for our sample experiment, you can write, do whatever you want here, honestly. Uh, you can write some notes. There's a couple options here. One thing I like to do if, I, if it's an experiment that has multiple tasks that will set up a checkbox and I can create some notes here, like feed my cells, change the media. All right, now to give you a more realistic example of how to use this, I'm gonna go over to my actual account, which has some templates. Obviously I'm gonna blur out some of the experiments and the details to protect our research, but I'll try to show you as much as I can and to make sure that you at least get an idea of like how this can be utilized to improve your workflow and make, make you more efficient in your lab work. All right, so the first thing is you'll see this calendar that I have here, which showcases uh, a lot of the, which showcases the experiments that I ran back in November. Each project has a different color. This makes it easy for you to uh, visually separate the experiments on the calendar. One thing you might notice is that I have these multi-day experiments. These are actually my cell differentiation protocols, and I do this to keep track of my stem cells. These stem cells need to be fed media on certain days. And what I did is I set up a template to help me keep track of that. And I'll get into that a little bit later uh, when I finish up the overview of the calendar. But you'll see that I have all of these experiments here and now it's really easy for me to figure out when I ran these experiments, if I have any notes, any like spare notes laying around that have the date of the experiment, I can easily cross-reference that onto this calendar and go, and go over to that experiment. What I normally do is I go to my entry from template and I have a template for my experiment. I set the initial day. This is fine for now. Um, we'll call this sample experiment. Make sure you set the template before you name the experiment because if you select this, it'll actually erase the, uh, the name that we have here. It'll go the default name, which is experiments. So we'll go to sample, experiment, and I'll go to other tasks. And I'll go to this folder that I made up called other task. This is the template that I've made and you'll see that I have these outlines with the various headers that remind me to put the appropriate notes in for my experiment. I have a header for background and purpose, expectation, hypothesis, the cell passage, materials, procedure, protocol, any calculations, results, conclusions, and next steps, and so on. Now usually for the background and hypothesis, I'll type those in. The cell passage number, uh, I will actually reference the differentiation protocol or the differentiation instance that I'm also logging in Benchling, and this makes it really easy for me to cross-reference cell lines to the experiment. And this is really useful because sometimes there might be a problem with the cell line, or there might be, there might've been an issue with the differentiation. And then I can actually go back and see, for example, there were multiple experiments that went wrong. I can easily see if they all came from the same cell line. And I, or I can also make correlations later on where I might've seen some kind of like weird variances in my experimental replicates. 
and it could turn out, for example, that all like the really weird results were coming from a bad cell batch. So this, this makes it really easy for me to keep track of that. I have uh, notes here for materials, protocols, uh, and my calculations. And then we also, in our lab, we submit progress reports every week. I like to reference those progress reports here um, in case I ever do need to look them up. All right, now I'm gonna go over to a form that is filled out. This is an experiment that I ran a few weeks ago where I was looking at barrier function in my brain endothelial cells. I wrote down the purpose of the experiment here, my expectation, and this is what I was talking about, where I can easily cross-reference it to the cell line that it came from. So if I click on this, I'll see that this came from a batch of cells that were differentiated on November 7th, 2022. And then for this, I actually have a checklist uh, so I set up a template on November 7th, and then I had these steps pre-filled. So basically the day after I set the, the cell differentiation, I have to change the media, and I have to change, uh, I have to swap the media, and then every day after that I have to change the media up until day four. It is at this point that I switch the media again and leave it there for two days. Um, and this makes it really easy for me because if I ever am unsure what to do for that day, I can click on that day. So for example, I have a differentiation protocol running that started on November 20th. Uh, let's say it's the 27th or let's say it's the 28th and I'm not sure what I need to do in lab that day. I can easily click on this and now I know um, that I have to change media. And you'll see that's like, that's listed right here. So this makes it really easy for me to keep track of the steps I need for my differentiation protocols. Now going back to the actual experiment, I have my notes here. Um, you know, I forgot to do a few things that day. I made sure I jotted that down. I have plate maps so that I remember the layout of my cells. Now, this is what uh, something else that I really like. You can actually upload your files, whether it's like Excel files or even Prism files, and keep them here. This makes it really convenient for me to go back, look at the experiment, download the data. That way I have the raw data and I can easily aggregate it when putting together a paper. I also usually put together, uh, I usually take some screenshots of my Prism data or the data that I put in my progress reports and I also paste it here in case I ever do need to make a quick reference to the data and uh, remember what happened in this experiment. I usually put all my conclusions and results here as well and then finally I have a progress report that this data is in. Uh, and I think one of the benefits of using Benchling in an electronic lab book in my lab specifically is that we are required to submit a progress report every week. So instead of typing all of this from scratch every week or copying from hard copy lab book, I already have it all typed up and I can easily copy and paste it into my progress report, which makes life a lot easier and it saves me a lot of time as well. Some other features is, are that you can go to this external data tab. You can actually go to your Google Drive. Uh, it's not linked right now for some reason, but um, and I'm going to fix this, but what you can normally do is you can easily just access your Google Drive and drag files from there into your lab book, which also is really convenient, especially if you take pictures. All right, now for my project organization, you'll, I have a number of folders here. Each one designates a specific project topic. For example, there are aspects of my project that look at barrier function and endothelial cells, so I have a folder dedicated to those experiments specifically. I'm also running some drug delivery experiments, and I have another folder dedicated to that. And then each instance, each experimental replicate is contained within those folders. This also makes it really easy for me to go to those experiments, pull up the note, look at the data, and even pull the raw data if I've uploaded it, which I have done in this case. Once again, this makes it really easy for me to put things together for a paper or presentation. Another thing that I like to have is a folder that kind of has my to-do list for the day. And I do this on a monthly basis. I create a new sheet every month. And this is where I just kind of put all my random notes that I have to reorganize later. For example, experimental layouts, notes that I'm taking down on the fly, ideas that come to mind uh, that I don't feel like setting up a new template or, or sheet for because I'm not really sure where it's going to go. All that stuff goes here. And I do this, I have like a daily tracker. That way I can keep track of what I was doing that day, put down any quick notes uh, in this field. And once you check it off, you know, it gets crossed off on your, in your calendar view and it makes it easy to keep track of that way. Something I mentioned earlier is that it's important to know that you can access that your, your notes are archived. So for example, if I erase this, someone should be able to go in and see what the original notes are. And you can actually do that with Benchling. You can actually go to this icon right here, the history icon. And you can actually see what this note looked like at various points in time. So when I first wrote this note, it obviously was... When I first put this note together, it was obviously empty. And when we move forward to this day, it's all filled out. But I can see all the changes that I made along the way, which is really cool. Uh, and I think that's also a really important feature to have. 
Another thing you can do is you can share these results or these notes with people who don't have Benchling. You can do that by going to the share icon and that'll pop open the link, which you can copy and send to someone so that they can view these notes. Another nice feature is that you can actually export the data in the form of a zip, a zip archive or PDF. But yeah, I think that's a quick, quick introduction to Benchling. Hopefully you're able to see some of the features that I like. I, I, I really do love working with Benchling. It makes it really easy for me to keep all my notes together in one platform. And then I can also work on some of the stuff from home. So for example, if I don't have the ability to, if, I, if I'm really busy in lab and I don't have a chance to write down all my thoughts and notes in the lab, I can come back home, eat, relax a little bit, and then hop on the computer and jot down any of my remaining thoughts. Hopefully this gives you a better appreciation for Benchling if, you're, if there was something you were not familiar with before. I definitely recommend using it. I think it saved me a lot of time. It's, it's made me a lot more efficient as a graduate student, and I highly, highly recommend it. But if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you and take care.